Next comes the issue of does this get converted into this and this? They say that cold water fish contains DHA and EPA. EPA reduces inflammation. DHA, in a nutshell, is important for hormone regulation and brain function and extremely important for women who are pregnant or breastfeeding or thinking about getting pregnant. Now we talked about how this, an enzyme comes and adds some carbons and adds some double bonds and we get longer, more unsaturated chains as we go along. We said the same thing happens in the omega-6 family. As it turns out, it's the same enzymes that act on the omega-3 family also act on the omega-6 family. So imagine now if ideally you should be eating about a one-to-one -one ratio of these so the enzymes can keep up a little bit. Or you could go up to about four to one because the enzymes can convert the omega-6 family about four times faster than they can convert the omega-3 family. So in theory, if you had a four to one ratio, the enzymes would be able to work equally on both. But now let's say you're like the average American and you eat 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. Those enzymes are so busy dealing with all the omega-6s that even if you get your two grams of alpha-linolenic acid per day, the enzymes are so busy with the omega-6s they may not be able to convert it all the way into DHA. So that's one of the primary things that inhibits this conversion process. Other things that inhibit this are saturated fats, which we find in animal food, and trans fats, which I don't know that we'll be able to get into that today. Well, actually, let's do it. Let's talk about trans fats real quick. Instead of putting this hydrogen on the top, we're going to put it on the bottom. So they're across from each other, like a transcontinental flight goes across the continent. So now we have three carbons on, three hydrogens on the top, and three hydrogens on the bottom. So we'll ask our fatty acid shape expert, what's going to happen to the shape of this now? Well, it would be a little bit of an S-curve, and that's true. It might have a little bit of a kink to it, but the overall, when you average it all out, it would be pretty straight. It wouldn't have a curve again. It would be straight like a saturated fat. And when you see something that says partially hydrogenated, corn, cotton seeds, sunflower, soybean oil, that's what it means. It means there's trans fats in there. And they have longer shelf life, but they're not good for us. So trans fats also interfere with this conversion process. Now in the various studies that question whether our body has the ability to convert alpha-linolenic acid into these longer chain omega-3 fats that are found in cold water fish, they all say no problem making enough EPA. Not an issue there at all. But some of them say, you know, we don't end up with enough DHA, and that can be a problem. Well, why can that be such a problem? Well, DHA has six double bonds. So with all those double bonds and those six extra electrons, it's very capable of conducting electrical activity. Now, the cell membranes in our brain cells are obviously having to conduct electrical nerve impulses all the time. And that's what keeps us thinking properly, it's what keeps us coordinated, it's what keeps our eyes working properly, and on and on. So we need enough DHA in our brain cells to make the impulses work properly. In fact, of the fat in the cell membranes of your brain cells, half of it is DHA. Also, if we take a quick look here at We've been talking about that cell membrane. So let's say here's a cell membrane. I think I'll stand over on this side. Hope we're doing okay with the camera. Let's say we take a little chunk of the cell membrane like that. Well, what we're going to see is we're going to see a protein layer. And there's actually going to be two of them. So does that make sense now? This is outside of the cell and this is inside of the cell. And then in between, we're going to see a fat layer. Right? And some of them are going to be straight and saturated. Others are going to have a little curve to them. Others are going to be really curved. And it's going to look something like that. Now let's just say you want to have some influence over this cell. In general in the body, there's two ways to do it. You can send an electrical impulse through the nerves. So the nervous system is a, a huge controlling and coordinating factor in the body. Or you can send a hormone over here. 
and that has to do with the endocrine system. So what we've got is various hormone receptors that are embedded right within that layer of the cell membrane. And the electrical characteristics and the structure of those fatty acids have a big influence over the cell membrane. So if you have the wrong mix of fatty acids in here, in other words, if, you're try if you need a fork, but instead you're trying to use a spoon, then some of these hormone receptors aren't going to work properly. So for example, with insulin that regulates blood sugar, when insulin comes over to its insulin receptor, when there's the wrong mix of fatty acids in your cell membranes, because there was the wrong mix of fatty acids that went in your mouth, insulin's not going to work so well anymore. And insulin's not going to be able to do its normal job of escorting glucose from the bloodstream into the cells. Therefore, excess glucose is going to remain in your bloodstream, and when you have high blood sugar levels, that's called diabetes. And blood sugar damages the blood vessels. If, for example, if this is a serotonin receptor in your brain cells, again, when we have the wrong mix here, serotonin's going to come along, and it's not going to stimulate the effects that it's supposed to as much. That can lead to, for example, depression. And then someone will take a medication like a Prozac or Elevil, which is called an SSRI, or Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. And the bottom line with that is it increases the levels of serotonin where two brain cells come together to communicate with each other. There's various side effects from those also. The good news is they are starting to do some reports where they're actually giving DHA to people with depression, and in some cases finding that it's actually as effective or even more effective than medications, getting to the root of the issue that rather than trying to cover it up. There's two more hormones that we'll mention that actually when you've got the wrong fatty acid components in your cell membranes, those hormones have amplified effects. So what hormone is it that makes a female go from a girl to a woman? Estrogen, Estrogen that's right. Estrogen basically makes things grow creates puberty, and again, turns you from a girl into a woman. So if we looked at breast cancer, for example, about 85% of breast cancers are known as hormone-dependent or estrogen-dependent breast cancer, meaning that estrogen fuels the growth of those cancers. So if you look at the traditional breast cancer drug called tamoxifen, or a newer class of drugs called aromatase inhibitors, what they do is they take different strategies in reducing the effects of estrogen on your cells. So you don't have as much estrogen to fuel the growth of breast cancer. Well, when we have the wrong fatty acid mix, when estrogen comes along to the cell membrane, its effect is amplified. So wouldn't it maybe make more sense to make sure this is working right in the first place, and then estrogen might not fuel the development of breast cancer as much? Another hormone that has amplified effects is called angiotensin. And the bottom line with that is when you have increased levels of this stuff called angiotensin, you get increased levels of another hormone called aldosterone. And aldosterone's job is to tell your kidneys to reabsorb sodium more efficiently. When you get sodium reabsorption, you increase the fluid level in your body in general as well as in your blood vessels. And all else being equal, if you have a certain size tube that's your blood vessel and you stuff more volume in there, is that going to increase or decrease your blood pressure? It's going to increase it. So fatty acid imbalances can cause a whole host of difficulties. So let's go back now and discuss why it's so incredibly important if you're pregnant or breastfeeding or thinking about becoming pregnant. We said that half of the fat in the brain cells of human beings is this stuff called DHA. Obviously, when you have another human being growing within you, you need to supply the raw materials that that, that person is going to be made out of, including large quantities of DHA, so the, brains and the, the brain and the eyes and other functions of your fetus can develop properly. So typically what happens is, if, has anyone ever heard someone who got pregnant and then got a bunch of swelling and they called it preeclampsia? Well, that can be due to the angiotensin-aldosterone connection. 
Has anyone ever heard of a, a pregnant woman getting something called gestational diabetes? Why does it happen all of a sudden when they get pregnant? Because there's a major drain on the DHA reserves of the woman because just from a survival point of view, nature's saying, look mom, we need to let you get the kid out, breastfeed it a little bit, nurture it till it can take care of itself, but you know what? The kid gets priority. You don't get priority, we're gonna take everything out of you and give it to the kid. How about after you have the kid, the best time that you really wanna connect with the new life, and then you get postpartum depression. That's not so good, also can be very much related to a DHA deficiency. So going back to conversion, some of the studies have questioned, do we make enough DHA from alpha-linolenic acid? And some have shown, yeah, we make some. Others have shown, no, we don't really make that much. But when you start to examine those studies more carefully, you find that what they do is they give people alpha-linolenic acid who are on a high-fat diet, who are eating trans fats, who are eating too many omega-6 fats, who are doing things that everybody knows interferes with this conversion process, then they don't end up with enough of this, and then they say, the body can't do it, you have to consume fish. That, that's the basic bottom line argument. Well, there's one particular study that I, is quoted often as, as proving this point, but when you actually sometimes look beyond the headlines and you really take the time to read the study and analyze how it was done and think about it and look some things up in some other articles and, and you know, blah, 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 where you read a sentence and you have to think about it for a while. Most people don't do that. Well, this question, because I've been a vegan for 19 years, and in fact, so is my wife, and it, it's of great personal interest to me, so I've taken the time to do some investigating. So in one particular study that is fairly indicative of the studies that question, do we do this omega-3 conversion properly, they did a couple things. They took pregnant women, and they looked at them from 14 weeks of pregnancy to eight months after birth and they gave one group of women some margarine containing some omega-6s. And they gave another group of women some margarine containing some omega-6s and some omega-3s. And it was about a three and a half to one ratio. Which isn't too bad, but the rest of their diet most likely was a 20 to one ratio, and in the margarine we get trans fats. So then what they did is they looked at the blood levels of DHA in both the mom and in the babies, and what they found is that there was no difference in the blood levels of DHA whether the women were given the omega-3s or whether they were given the omega-6s. Now what's interesting is that the bloodstream is only the transport mechanism. It doesn't really matter how much of any fat you have in your blood, especially for DHA, you want to get it into those cell membranes because that's where it counts. Let's see if I have a, a picture of this. So sometimes if you measure something indirectly, you can actually get a better indicator of its functional status. So for example, if you don't have enough DHA, what happens is this stuff down here, and this is something called Osbond acid, for those of you who want to know, and it has 22 carbons. It has, let's see, so this one is 22, 6, omega-3, and this one is 22,5 omega-6. So if you took this stuff here called Osbond acid, which is an omega-6 fat, and you added one more double bond in the omega-3 position, you would then have DHA. So what happens is when you don't have enough DHA, levels of this stuff rise, because it's the next closest thing to DHA. It can perform some of the functions of DHA, but not quite as well. Sort of like if, if you need more troops somewhere, and you know, maybe that's a bad example based on the current, uh, current situation here, but just politics aside, you need more troops, there aren't any more trained, but you've got, you've got the trainees. It's like, well, let's send the trainees out, because good enough, it's, it's the closest thing we have. So Osbond acid levels rise when DHA goes down. So, Going back to our study, in the women who were in the control group, which means they just got omega-6s, there was an increase in the level of Osbond acid, which isn't too unusual because DHA is getting depleted during pregnancy. However, in the group that got the alpha-linolenic acid, 
there was no increase in the, in the levels of Osbond acid. So one of the conclusions of the study, if you read behind the headlines, is alpha linolenic acid supplementation increases the functional indicator of DHA status in pregnant women. Why wouldn't we see it in the blood? Probably because you need it in the, in the cell membranes and it doesn't hang out in the blood, it goes into the cell membranes when you need it. So it's not absolutely all conclusive, but I'm just trying to point out that when you read beyond the headlines, a lot of times there's a lot of different information. So going to a, a real life example, and uh, just make sure I'm doing okay time-wise, I wanna have a, plenty of time for uh, questions at the end, and, and this gentleman's first. Um, knowing the importance of this, my wife has been a vegan for 16 years. She doesn't consume flax seeds with any regularity, but she eats 99% uh, raw food, a lot of fresh fruit, and lots of green leafy vegetables. We make a giant salad every night. It includes lettuce, she really likes bok choy, which isn't my favorite, but she loves the stuff. So she eats lots of leafy green vegetables. So about a year or so ago, we decided to have her tested. The bottom line is, we, um, there's a company called Great Smokies Diagnostic Lab, and they recently changed their name to Genova Diagnostics, and we had their full 17 fatty acid profile done, where they actually look at the cell membranes of the red blood cells. It's not just blood levels, it's cell membrane levels of all the different fatty acids. The good news is for all the omega-3s, including DHA, she was within the normal range, which we were extremely happy about. And so I can say to the people who say we don't make DHA out of alpha linolenic acid, I can say for absolute certain with at least one person <laughs> that my wife can, can do this conversion. And my guess is if she can do it, she's probably not the only one on the planet that can do it. But what they say also is that number one, and this will make some sense from a survival point of view, women are better at doing this conversion than men. And then they're even better when they're pregnant and breastfeeding. Makes sense because you need this stuff more. So let's just say, for example, you're, it's not the best case scenario. You've eaten too much junk food, or sometimes just over time with age, these enzymes don't work as well as they're supposed to. You don't necessarily want to eat fish, but you want to make sure you have enough of this. Well, Dr. Furman was just here. I don't know if you've, any of you were just here for his lecture. He has an algae-based DHA supplement. And if you need to do so, if, for example, you just want to be extra safe, or if you get tested and you find that you need some extra DHA, you can get it from an algae source. And by the way, DHA and EPA are found in cold water algae because they contain all these extra double bonds. Think about salmon up in, in Alaska where the water's really cold. Imagine if that salmon was made out of saturated turkey fat. How would it do? Would it stay fluid and flexible and could it swim around? It would stiffen up. Now olive oil, if it's out at room temperature, is liquid, but if you put it in the refrigerator, you know if your fridge is cold enough, the olive oil will start to get a little hazy, it'll start to thicken up a little bit. Well olive oil is a monounsaturated fat, meaning it has one double bond. Has anyone ever put flax oil in the freezer? You can put flax oil in the freezer and it gets thicker, but it still pours. Whereas the olive oil is getting solid in the refrigerator. Well, flax oil is full of alpha linolenic acid with three double bonds. So EPA with five double bonds and DHA with six double bonds, you can get that stuff really cold and it won't stiffen up because it's curved and fluid and flexible and it, you don't, it doesn't pack as much together. And those electrons also repel each other. So again, it, it, it's more dispersive and more fluid and flexible. So it's like nature's antifreeze. So, and that's where the fish get their EPA and their DHA from. So why don't we just go to the algae directly and leave the fish alone? One more thought that is, is admittedly my theory but I think it's, it's worthy of mention. There's not many omega-3s in food anymore because with three double bonds compared to omega-6 essential fats, two double bonds, this stuff has much better shelf life. 
Because every time you add a double bond, you make it more fluid and more flexible, but you also make the fat more susceptible to oxidation. So this stuff goes rancid more quickly than this stuff. This has five double bonds, and you know, EPA, plenty of EPA, you get plenty of EPA from this, even in the studies that question the conversion, plenty of EPA. But this stuff has six double bonds. So it is more susceptible to oxidation than this. And I'm going to suggest if you already have enough DHA and you take extra alpha linolenic acid, your body is not going to make extra DHA with six double bonds that has the potential to get oxidized in your body. And we all know that, or at least in the, in the nutrition and, and research community, it's well known that oxidized fats damage the arteries, damage blood vessels, and lead to all sorts of problems. So for example, Dr. Furman was talking about the carotenoid test. Where I've gotten that tested on several occasions, and usually they say, oh my god, you're three times higher than the average person, and being a raw food vegan for 19 years, I'm pretty loaded with all the carotenoids. Now, beta carotene gets converted into the body into vitamin A, as we need it. And it's pretty well known within nutrition that excess levels of vitamin A are rather toxic. In fact, if women have too much vitamin A when they're pregnant, that can lead to birth defects. So, so far, I haven't died of vitamin A toxicity. Even though I have lots of beta carotene, then the body just splits the beta carotene in half, you get two vitamin A's out of it. Because there's some regulation mechanism in there telling my body, don't make too much vitamin A, even though you have the stuff that makes it. So I'm going to suggest, and other researchers have also suggested, that there is a regulation mechanism to not make too much super unsaturated fats that are susceptible to oxidation, even if you have the ability to do so. So does that clear a few things up? Or we, a few things about fats make more sense? And let me see what time it is. And uh, I'm going to open up to questions. Let me get this gentleman first, and then I'm going to go to you. But let me just make a quick announcement first. Um, if this subject interests you, I've got the two-hour extended version of this on two audio CDs over at our table, everything you wanted to know about fat. So if you're interested and you want to follow up, and also if you go over to the table, you can find out about the raw food classes that we teach and even a retreat that we're doing with the Ann Wigmore Institute in Puerto Rico in February and March of 07. And if you want to find out more about the practice of my wife and I, we're just learning how to make websites, so we just got a good one here. It's called Raw Food doctors.com. So if you want to follow up, you can check us out.